Okay, so today's presentation is on Onyx, a free maintenance app. So what we'll be covering is what is Onyx, how to download it, how does it work, how can it help clean up system junk and caches, and what are the benefits of doing so? What is Onyx? Onyx is a multifaceted freeware application for Mac OS dedicated to keeping your systems in good shape. This maintenance app runs tasks such as cleaning, performing corrective actions, and rebuilding databases and indexes. How to download Onyx. To download Onyx, enter this hyperlink, which will be sent out to you guys later on, and make sure that you download the version that is intended for your operating system. If you don't, the one you download will not be compatible. So the, when you enter the website, you'll see the most recent one at the top and at the bottom, mm -hmm. as you scroll, you will see the older versions for different macOS operating systems. How does it work? Onyx has a simple and modern design that is very user-friendly. When you open up Onyx, there will be seven tabs located at the top of the screen. These tabs are the home page, maintenance, utilities, and files, as well as parameters, info, and the file search tool. The maintenance tab is dedicated to scanning and optimizing your device. It is broken into three different categories to perform various tasks. So as seen on the right, this is what it'll look like once you enter uh, the maintenance tab. And as you can see, there's verifying, rebuilding, and cleaning. As the name suggests, in the verifying subgroup, you can verify the structure of the file system. You can also delete the APFS, which is the Apple File System Snapshots. The APFS is a capture of the state of the startup disk and keeps all captured files on the drive. If anything goes wrong with your Mac, this can take it back to the state of when the capture was taken. So ensure that your device is okay before performing this task. The rebuilding subgroup is dedicated to rebuilding indexes and databases. For example, the spotlight index option can be used when you can't find files on the disk. It will rebuild the spotlight search index. The cleaning subgroup is dedicated to cleaning junk off the disk and freeing space. Choose what applications, system files, log messages, and internet files should be deleted. And this is what these two look like. So these are the various options that you have to rebuild uh, any databases that may be functioning weirdly or not running well. And then these are all the other things that you can clean, which is your systems, applications, internet, and other miscellaneous things. To run maintenance scripts, click in the eye icon found next to system and the cleaning subgroup of maintenance. Maintenance scripts are responsible for regular cleanup, including deleting temp files, network statistics, duplicate downloads, and app related cache. In utilities, you will see five options. File system is the option used to verify the structure of the file system on both the system volume and the data volume. You can also see when it was last checked. APFS snapshots is used to show, create, or delete Apple file system snapshots. So as you can see here, these are the different categories that are broken up. And we just went over file system and APFS snapshots. And the manuals option, you can use it to format and display the Unix manual, which is a detailed user manual of any command that can be run on the terminal. For the process option, you will see it, sorry, you will see it is turned off by default. Enabling it lets you save the process accounting of all accounts into a file. This file can become quite large and substantially increases the activity on your device. So this is what the user manual looks like. It just is a very detailed breakdown of the commands that you can perform on your terminal 
which includes the name of the com the name of the command, the synopsis, the description, and more things like that. Lastly, the applications option is used to open applications that are present by default in your macOS, but aren't easily accessible for the user. So this includes things like screen sharing, which is when you can um, uh, show, show your screen for other people to view, as well as the wireless diagnostics, the directory utility, and summary service, which is all um, very helpful things. The files tab has six different panes. Visibility is used for changing the visibility status of a volume, folder, or file. So as you can see here, this is what it looks like. You can either choose to show or hide um, certain uh, folders, files, and applications, and things like that. And then the erasing permanently, the erase, sorry, the erasing pane permanently erases the selected file or the folder and its content. This can be time consuming, especially with folders containing many items. Apple double can be used for deleting Apple double files. These files starts with a period and an underscore and are created by the computer when the application adds resource data or metadata to a file on a volume whose format doesn't natively support them. If you are going to use this option, it's recommended to carefully read the Onyx user guide before doing so. Checksum is used to calculate and compare the checksum, also known as the message digest fingerprints for a file. While installing a package, a receipt file is created and stored in a system folder. You can display the contents of these files in the packages subgroup by using the command lsvom. Double click an item to display it in Finder. Lastly, trash is for emptying the trash of its content. Now, sometimes when you delete it, uh, it's not really gone. So that option is very helpful as well. The security tab displays information about the security sorry, the security technologies included in macOS. If you disable any of the options found here, you increase your computer security risk. So as you can see, it shows whatever is available on your system. This specific system has um, a firewall, gatekeeper. It also checks for security responses and a file vault. You can also see um, when uh, each version was last used or updated. The find search tool is broken into three categories. In, lo uh, sorry, in locate, you can quick, quickly reveal a file or folder by searching the index of the locate database. These searches are case sensitive and don't accept certain special characters. In find, you can use the command to quickly locate a file in your home folder. And in MD find, use the command to quickly find a file or folder by using the same metadata used in Spotlight search. It can also find system files. So this is what this um, the search tab looks like. You have them broken into three different categories. And once you are using them, once you uh, click on any specific one, they'll appear in this area here. In the parameters section, you can manipulate general parameters and change system app preferences. This includes menus, such as your Apple menu or your Finder menu and more, applications, and also Finder as a whole. So you can, um, in Finder, uh, the tab itself, you can show hidden files and folders and more. And then there's also the login option where you can edit your background and startup mode. Then you also have the miscellaneous and doc options, which are all just um, you editing different uh, parameters. And you can also edit like the graphic effects and also your desktop and your Windows display. The info tab provides useful information regarding your Mac's hardware, software, memory, volumes, and profile. 
So in the hardware section, it includes information regarding the physical components of your device, such as the processor, uh, the chipset model, the VRAM, the resolution, and things like that, and also your serial number. In the memory section, it includes information such as the amounts of memory used are free and the memory type, and as well as like your physical memory, the number of swap files, and things like that. The software section includes information regarding your device's software. This is things like the system version, the username and identity. These are all present here. In the volume section, you can see the system and data volume on your device. And in the profile section, um, the profile section is to display and save the profile of your hardware and software configuration. So this is what the profile uh, section looks like. In the cleaning subgroup found in the maintenance tab, you will see all the available caches and junk. Simply press the I button to see the cache being cleared. The option to clean your caches are also separated into subgroups. So as you can see here, once you enter maintenance and cleaning as they're broken down, you would simply click on this I button to see what exactly is being cleared away. Your cache is simply a component that stores data so that future requests for that data can be accessed faster. So once you've clicked on the little I button, these are a breakdown of all the things that it's clearing. So when you click on internet, you see that it's clearing your browser cache, your download cache, the browser history, um, bookmark icons and things of that nature, as long as you have them enabled. And you can see that for all of the subgroups located there. What are the benefits? One of the major benefits is despite the options of to perform these tasks with other apps already present on your Mac, Onks compiles them into one straightforward app. Other cleaning apps for Mac requires you to memorize commands and input them manually, whereas Onks will do them after you simply enable your preferences and click Run Task. Cleaning and maintaining your systems helps them run quicker, smoother, and keeps them in good condition overall. You can perform tasks quickly without worries of inputting the wrong command and avoid negative consequences. And here is a quick video that we're going to watch on how you can use Onyx. So these are the resources that uh, you guys will be able to explore once we send out the, um, the link for the presentation. And that concludes today's presentation. If you'd like to learn this lesson with a Cyber Seniors mentor, please go to www.cyberseniors.org or call one 217 3057 to register for a one-on-one -on -one phone session. We also host weekly tech drop-in sessions from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays. Mm -hmm.